All right, so it's the morning of July 20th, and today I'm gonna be putting in two more brassica food plots here at home. And uh, right here is an area where we planted some trees, I think three or four years ago now. We got some pine trees coming up here. Some maples and stuff. Anyways, I should have did this a couple years ago. It is right between these lanes. This is all sprayed off already. I sprayed it yesterday, so it has plenty. So I had time to dry before I seeded it. I could have sprayed it after too, but I just wanted to spray it while it was, you know, standing tall. Because some of this stuff's pretty big in here. Anyways, I'm gonna plant brassicas in between each one of these tree rows we have. Hopefully this stuff all dies off nice. There's a lot of Queen Anne's lice. You can tell all that white flowery crap in there. But yeah, I'm gonna plant up. And this is a test spot that I did. Um, it would have been about a week and a half ago where it's dead. And these brassicas in here are just starting to come up. So um, I know this method works, but I know uh, usually when you have a big sod mat like this, it's kind of hard for the seeds to germinate through all this. Here's some of the honey hole seeds. They're right down to the dirt. And driving over with the four-wheeler, you know, pushes some of them in. Like you can tell that soybean's pushed in. So it packs them into the ground a little bit with the tires. But the main thing is just getting them down to the soil. We got um, rain chances for thunderstorms this afternoon and tonight. So that should help pack in these seeds even better. Plus the, the soil is already kind of moist because we've had some rain recently. So that's gonna help too. You can tell there's just seeds on the soil everywhere. See, once in a while there's a few like that that's right on the sod mat. That probably won't germinate. This one right here and all these other ones down here by the soil should germinate. So, yeah, it's going to look good. I'll get back to you once I get some results, probably in a week or maybe two weeks by the time they're, you know, decent size. But... Can I be your superhero? finished roller tilling this it took quite a bit but, uh, this was basically a, a food plot failure because just behind me here well I'll just show you where I'm at I'm at home here just really close to the house those are the soybeans down there as you can tell and uh, this area right here we uh, spray and seeded some brassicas and we also did that over here in some of our tree rows and this is what I'm left with after about a, almost a month of growth well about 20 almost 30 days something like that not really that impressive. The soybeans are looking all right, but uh, you come over here, that's what that whole plot looked like over there. It was actually worse than what this area looks like. So that's why I'm gonna come in here and fix up some of this stuff too. I probably won't make this. The road's right there. Right there, we just destroyed everything and we're gonna restart. But some of these areas, I might save some of these beans and some of the areas where the brassicas look all right. But as you can tell, it's just hardly any of this stuff looks good. Anyways, let's get back over to here now. Um, what I'm going to be doing here, this is kind of a test plot over here too because I'm going to put half the plot, the top half, into Imperial Whitetail, um, Whitetail Institute Tall Tine Tubers. 
that's this blend right here. This has, well, 55% tall time turnip and 10% triple top turnip. It's just all turnips, no forage rape, no kale, just all turnip. But turnips are very similar to forage rapes and kale. And then the other half is gonna go, the bottom half will be in Northwoods Whitetails blend. This is their Sweet Feast um, Brassica blend. I can't really see what all the percentages are because I got it tied off here, but yeah, there's um I know there's purple top turnips. You can tell there's kale, some brassica, forage rapes. There's all kinds of stuff in this. You can see the seeds. Those are the daikon or dankin radish, tillage radish, whatever you want to say. Those are those seeds. But anyways, I'm gonna get seed in here in a little bit. I'll update you. Will it break? Can I take? Can I be your superhero? So back here at home again, checking up on our brassica plots here. This is the area that we tilled up, as you saw earlier in the video. <clears throat> and then right over here by the trees is uh, where I uh, basically left a lot of the original planting, the no-till. But this area, I completely, completely tilled up and um, replanted this area. I'll show you what the, what the differences look like here in just a second. All right, so right here is... Uh, I'm not sure how long this is after, um, but this stuff looks really good. I did fertilize it once, which is generic nitrogen fertilizer. Um, although it probably is a little bit overseeded, but that's not really the end of the world because it's getting so late in the growing season, it's not really gonna get to its full maturity in size. And this half of the plot is uh, Imperial Whitetail or Whitetail Institute um, tall, tall Tine Tubers. And then somewhere right about in the middle here, maybe right here, you can kind of see a line. This side of the plot is all um, Northwoods Whitetail's um, Sweet Feast Brassica blend. This stuff is a little bit smaller, but maybe that's just because it's not as thick. But uh, anyways, I'm going to take you right over here now. Like I said, that area back there was all replanted from the original no-till plant, but right up here, I replanted a few areas in here with, where I came in with the rototiller and planted brassicas with uh, winter, winter rye. And these brassicas right here are all from the original no-till planting. And then heading all the way up to that, these rows too. This one right here is starting to grow a bulb already, this purple top turnip. But yeah, like I said, this stuff's pretty thin in here, but there should technically be more plants in here, but at least the ones that are in here are going to be able to get to their full potential before the growing season's done here, even though they're planted kind of late. But there's still going to be plenty of food here. Well, here we are, back out here for the final update of uh, both these brassica areas, the no-till and this plot behind me. Um, I think it's September 19th today, so this video has been almost a uh, two, two and a half month long process, but it's finally over. Some of these purple top turnips in here are starting to make balls, but these are just like the size of radishes or, or smaller. But uh, those ones right over there, I'll show you those in a little bit. Some of those bulbs are like the size of softballs, it's crazy. Here's another example of overseeding, like you can tell right there, it's thick, but some of these plants like along the edge are like bigger just because they're on the edge and they're not like surrounded by brass because they got at least one side, you know, that doesn't have anything so they got more room to grow. So yeah, I definitely overseeded this, I screwed up, but uh, it's still going to be a brassica, it still is a nice brassica food plot. I mean there ain't a single weed in this whole plot because the brassicas just took over. 
and shade everything out. Even though we tilled it up, there ain't a single weed in here. It looks per picture perfect, but the spot I'm going to take you to next over there by my trees is 10 times better because those plants are, you'll see what I'm talking about once I get over there. This no-till area turned out absolutely amazing. I don't know if you can see that, but it's just solid brassicas in, in between these rows of trees. And these ones were not overseeded at all because we had extremely low germination through all this old dead sod. But it took these brassicas forever to get going. I mean, for the longest time, they were just like some of these small weeds here. They were like really small and they really weren't growing. But then all of a sudden, after about a month, they took off. It took them a month to get a couple inches tall. But after that, they just took off and now they look amazing. I cannot believe this. I mean, some of these, let's see if I can find. Yeah, right here is a pretty good size purple top turnip. I mean, that's like a softball. There's my hand. It's bigger than a baseball. And then this is an area that I replanted because here there was absolutely nothing growing. And same thing with some of these other areas over here. There was no brassicas in here, so I just tilled it all up with the rototiller. And then put in some uh, brassicas in winter rye. And that's looking good. These brassicas won't get that big, but... Yeah, and I see that even some of these brassicas, when I seeded this, grew on this grass here. These ones right here. So, I mean, this no-till method works. We probably could have just waited to see what that turned out to be. Because... That had some brassicas in it, but I know it didn't have as many as these areas did. But if we wouldn't have tilled it up, we would have had some brassicas in there, but it probably wouldn't have looked as good as this. But who knows, like I said, those, those brassicas, they just took forever to get going. Like here's an example, they were like this small and looked really unhealthy for a really long time, but like I said, eventually they just took off. I mean, look at how much forage there is. I mean, these leaves are absolutely huge. This stuff is just absolutely amazing. Right here is a forage rape or a kale plant. And I can just see, I mean, look at the size of the base on this thing and all these leaves coming off. This is insane. And then you see this uh, purple top turn up here. This one is easily big as a softball or bigger. I mean, my hand, I mean, it's just huge. Probably the biggest one I've seen. And that's what you get when you give these plants this much to grow, space to grow because literally this plant right here is all the way over here. I mean there's like, there's a small one in between here, but within like 18 inches there's three plants. And if you plant too thick, like some of these areas that I replanted, these plants will never even come close to being this big. So that's the one thing I like about no-till is even though you do get bad germination, you don't have to worry about overseeding at all because usually the, the plants thin themselves out because half of them don't even grow or less than half in this case. And this, the soybeans in here are still looking good. Man, it turned out really good. And it was nice that I was able to come back in here and replant all this too. All that winter rye. Well, if you're new to the channel, please subscribe for more content like this. And uh, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. And that's pretty much all I got to say. I wish all you luck this season. Hopefully everyone gets a nice one. Um, yeah, so I guess until next time, see you guys.